Welcome to Avidine Training for your IFD. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up your Jeppesen JDM account, your 60-day free trial, and also how to update your IFD databases. Here you can see kind of a flow chart of the steps involved. So after purchasing your IFD, you're going to go to the Avidine website and sign up for the free 60-day JEP trial. And within 24 to 48 hours, you'll get an email from Jeppesen with your login credentials and a link to download the JDM app onto your PC or Mac. Once you get your email from JEP, you go download JDM on your PC and log in with the credentials it gives you, which is your email address, and they'll provide you a temporary password. Select and verify the aircraft. If you have multiple aircraft or uh, and different types of equipment, you may need to uh, select that, otherwise it will default for you. Download the databases that come free that you signed up for when you filled out the 60-day free trial form. You can download those onto your jump drive, take them out to the airplane, and load them in, and you're all set to go. So we'll take you through those steps here. Again, to get your free JEP trial after you've ordered your IFD, and, or maybe it's being installed as we speak, go to avidine.com slash free dash JEP dash trial. Another way to get there is to just go to avidine.com, and you'll see at the top of the page a pilot support link. Click on that link, and it will take you to the Pilot Support Center and Knowledge Base. Here you can find all kinds of interesting information about any Avidine equipment, including your IFDs. In this case, we want to find the Jeppesen 60-day free trial information. You could type it in here, but the, the most recent articles always come up to the top of the page. You can scroll down. There's a bunch of other. But for now, we're going to just find the 60-day JEP trial. There it is, and we're going to click on it, and it'll take you to this page, which has a little more information about it and it has a link to take you to the form. So let's click on that link and that'll take you to the free JEP trial form. So let's fill this form out. and It'll ask for your tail number, aircraft make, model. You will want to know the serial numbers and have those with you when you do this. If, let's say you have a 540 and a 440, so you'll need both of those serial numbers. And if you have happen to have a JEP account already, you can enter that account number. Otherwise, they will assign you one. And if you have a dealer that you want to associate with, you can put their email address in as well. Submit that. And again, within 24 to 48 hours, roughly, you'll get an email that looks similar to this. And on it, it has your account number. It has your email that you provided and a temporary password. So that'll be helpful. This is a list of the, in this case, is the services I uh, ordered. Again, there's your account number, temporary password. Here's a link you'll find to the Jeppesen Distribution Manager software for your Windows or your Mac. So once you get that link, we'll click on it and it'll take us to this page where we can download JDM for Windows or for Mac, as again, as it were. So let's click on that and it'll download the software over here and then when it's done, it'll, it'll ask you to execute and it'll load just like any normal software. And then when you're done, close it. And then you'll get a little icon like this on your desktop. It looks like this. I blew it up a little. But you'll see the JEP Distribution Manager. So that's uh, where you'll go to launch your app. Double-click on it. And here's where you'll enter your email address, which is your username, and the password provided in the email. So anyway, let's, for now, let's put in our email and that password that they gave you. And, and log in. It may ask you to select an aircraft if you have multiple aircraft. In which case, uh, but here's my account number, here's my, my fictitious airplane in my case, and here's all the databases that came with that free, because I've got two IFDs, so I've got uh, nav data, obstacles, and charts for my IFD 5 series, but then I have nav data and obstacles for the second unit as well. And notice it's cycle 2101, so that's the year 2021, and then the first cycle of the year, because it's... Uh, January when I registered. All right. 
Uh, you can click on where it says more, and this will give you some interesting data. This tells me that I've got all of America, so North and South America. In order to load it onto your IFD, remember you have to have a jump drive formatted for FAT32. And you can Google how to format a drive if you're not sure. And again, put, make sure your jump drive is FAT32. That's what it's showing here. Then come over here, and this will give you the option to download to the computer, but click Transfer to Device, and that will load them right onto your jump drive. So let's click that one, and you'll see it start loading. You go ahead and click all of them if you like, and they'll set themselves in the queue. It'll ask you which drive. Of course, I'm on the H drive here, so say yep. And here, notice I've got one's loading, and the other one's still queued up. And so I can get them all loaded on my jump drive, and then... Again, the nav data is the same for both, so it's the same file. Same with obstacles. I'm only putting charts on one of the units. But so you can see my DSF files for nav data, obstacles, and charts. It's on my jump drive, so now I eject that from my computer, take it out to the airplane, plug it into my IFD, plug it in before you start the before you power up the IFD. Make sure you have it plugged in before, because immediately at startup, it looks out there to see if that jump drive is there to put you into maintenance mode. Otherwise, it'll go into regular flight mode, and you'll have to repower it down. There's another way to get there, but basically just plug it in before you power up. Turn on the box, and at startup, the IFD will recognize the USB drive, and again, it'll bring you into maintenance mode. There's a lot of things you can do in maintenance mode, so you want to be careful in here. But for your normal updates, it comes to the default page here. And you can see it's reading the jump drive, and it knows there's the 2101 nav cycle, the 2101 obstacles, and then the 321 charts, which is, notice uh, I uh, uploaded this on February 3rd. These charts come available on the 5th, so that's going to go ahead and load the next cycle for me, rather than load the ones that expire in two days. So those are my three nav data types that I just put on the jump drive. They show up here. Now I'm going to take my lower right knob and I'm going to push in on the button to get a green check mark next to the ones that I want to load. And then I'll move the cursor down by spinning the knob to the next one, push in on the button, and it'll get a green check mark on it. Then I'll move down to the next one and then I'll get a check mark on all three data types. Once I do that, I can hit the proceed button and it will begin loading or downloading that data or uploading depending on your point of view. So the data will show active like it shows here and then when it's done it will say OK. So I've already got my nav data loaded which happens pretty quick. Obstacles is very quick because it's a much smaller file. And then the charts takes a little while longer. I mean it could take as much as four or five minutes so be prepared if you're on battery. Make sure you know, you've got adequate battery power. But it'll load, and you'll see a progress bar here as it takes its time, and it finally gets up to 100%. Once that's done, you'll get to this screen, and it'll say all three data types are OK and loaded with no errors. Then you'll just push the Done button. Always make sure you do that. Don't turn it off without hitting the Done button. If Otherwise, if you turn it off now without hitting the Done button, it will restart in maintenance mode, which you don't want. So hit Done and the IFD will reboot into regular flight mode or standard mode. And then you can come over to the, once it starts up, go to AUX, go to the System tab, and go to Status, and push that button until it shows Databases. And here you can see now I've got the Americas data, February 25th through February 25th. I've got Obstacles. i got JEP Terrain, which doesn't change that often, so we don't update that on a regular basis. And then the charts, which I mentioned, come effective uh, in two days. We've got our databases updated, and we're ready to go flying. Typically, when you have a JEP account, when it gets within 60 days of your subscription expiring, they send out a renewal invoice. So because you're getting a 60-day free trial, it automatically initiates a renewal. So you can continue to get your JEP updates without interruption after your 60-day free trial expires. So you'll find an invoice like you see here in the mail to continue to have the same database updates. Uh, you'll pay the fee to, to continue that service at the regular rates. Or if you want to, let's say you want to change to a different database package, 
Maybe you like having the nav data, but you don't want to update the charts every month. You can go into your JDM and select a different package and then just, you know, pay for it online with your credit card, etc. So it's pretty easy. It's very automated. Jet does a great job. And that gets you where you want to go. So if you have any questions on the 60-day free trial, how to download the JDM, updating the IFD databases on your IFD, shoot us an email at pilotsupport at avidine.com. Thanks and have a great day.